creature from the Black Lagoon. So was the Mexicans' idea. So was us. <laughs> Those shots are probably legendary today. Like that's that's my biggest takeaway of this movie. Welcome to List, the show we plug in the name out of an all-time movie. Watch this, watch it, and review it for your viewing pleasure. Come and hang out with us. If you guys enjoy these kind of videos, make sure you let us know by liking, commenting, and subscribing. The movie we're scratching off the list today is a 1954 monster horror classic, Creature from the Black Lagoon. A strange prehistoric beast lurks in the depths of the Amazonian jungle. A group of scientists tried to capture the animal and bring it back to civilization for study. This is directed by Jack Arnold, written by Harry Asics, Arthur A. Ross, Maurice Zim, and stars Richard Carlson, Richard Denning, and the beautiful, gorgeous, lovely Julie Adams. Oh my god. I, I fell in love as soon as I saw her. You're the party, man. I, know, I think I know why you liked her, because she kind of looks like Jennifer Connelly a little bit. Yep. She's stunning, man. Yeah, she's distracting. You're just like, oh, oh no, don't go in the water. <laughs> yeah. If, she eats up when the, the, the scene when she's in it. It's not the looks. I mean, they got the brains. This is one of the earliest OG monster movies from back in the 50s. Uh, i would never seen this before. The closest thing I got to this was actually The Shape of Water. That was considered a loose retelling of it. But yeah, I, I've never seen this movie before. I do feel like it features a great score, which every old movie does, because before having dialogue, we had to base everything off of the music. So I feel like the music back then was always a little bit better than now. So the, the music was part of the storytelling, like intrinsically tied with it. But it's still dope to me that the whole score was actually kind of Frankenstein together by a bunch of different composers. And even with that, they still managed to do a great job. Wow. I would never have thought it happened like that. The creature notes get a little bit repetitive, but I get it. They're just to let you know that there's a creature there. Yeah, and maybe not like as iconic as, as future creature features, but it does give you a sense of tension when you hear the sound and you see the thing, which is actually pretty well done. But they actually recycled that tone a little bit. They used it in the movie King Kong vs. Godzilla and a movie called They Saved Hitler's Brain. Never heard of it in my life. Okay, now I want to watch that. <laughs> We might watch that next year. I don't, I don't know. Oh, my God. I'm a little scared about that one. I don't know. Oh, Jesus. It was funny to me how early on he would kill people with one hand, kind of like a WWE claw move. <laughs> like a choke slam or something? <laughs> yeah. Because they were, they, were, they were definitely hiding the monster from us for a long period of the movie. And it was okay. It's kind of effective, I guess. Yeah. I mean, not as effective as now. Because, I mean, monsters right now are, are, are crazy. Right. But... For the time, I would imagine people just got creeped out horribly just watching. Wait, that arm was creepy. It looked funky, and yeah. it looked pretty good. It would have been cool to just teleport yourself back in the day because they actually premiered it like on a midnight screening in a few theaters here and there, and oh. that would have been pretty cool to kind of experience that. But we don't see him until around 25 minutes in is where you kind of get the first glimpse of him underwater. But actually, Disney animator Millicent Patrick and Bud Westmore, legendary makeup artist, came up with the idea and the design of the creature. Even if Westmore does downplay Patrick's involvement a lot, because of oh. course he would. Because <laughs> <laughs> it didn't come on to like fairly recently that she was actually involved in it. Just because how it was back in the day and it sucks. But she was actually the first female animator for Disney. It was, it, it, there's a whole book written about her, right? Yeah. The, the lady from Black Lagoon? Because there's a close-up also of the prosthetics, and you, you can kind of see the eyes. I really like the eyes, too. They're really creepy. And when he's out the water, the eyes are so buggy that it's just hilarious. I also appreciate how they hid the actor's teeth, right? They put something. Oh, yeah. Because he opens his mouth a lot to, like, breathe through his mouth when he's out of the water, and you can't see his teeth. 
Is, he has like gums. It's it's that I think that just adds to the creepiness of it. Yeah. And his gills open each time he opens his mouth. Just just creepy. It's creepy, dude. A, a movie from the fifties creeped me out. Right, and that's the point of it. And the fact that it still creeps you out today tells you how much of a good job this movie does. But as much as it does look like a guy in a suit, right? I did feel that they did try to do a lot of subtle things to kind of make you believe that's a creature. That thing with the eyes is one. The thing with the gills is one. One that I noted is that you don't see bubbles out of it when he's swimming underwater. Oh, yeah. Now that I, I did not like, clock that until you mentioned it right now. And this was a point of the director, Arnold, to not show any bubbles since the monster had gills. And it wouldn't make sense for bubbles to be coming out of the gills. And his movements underwater were very fluid. Oh, my God. It was fantastic. When Kay goes for like a, a jolly swim and you see her on top. And there's a wide shot, and you see the, the the gill man underwater. I love that shot. Oh my god, it was just beautiful. But also, again, it's creepy. And what what like drove it home for me was like when she she was getting told off, like, "Hey, come back! What the hell are you doing out there?" Mm-hmm. And the creatures like just trying to touch her and just touches her feet. Oh, you can get fucked away. It's like he's he's curious, but also enchanted by her because we don't re- really actually know the purpose of what the creature wants to do there's some theories out there that he wants to that's why he kidnaps all the women because he wants to mate because he's the only one left of this prehistoric creature right yeah but him messing with her feet shows that too and also it was a point but the director to kind of exploit the fear of something playing with your feet while you're swimming underwater everybody's felt that oh something touched my feet right like a piece of algae touches your toe and you say okay i'm gonna die a monster got my foot Right, so the, you you immediately go to that, and they really wanted to play with that. It, but that shot when he's swimming right underneath her is beautiful. It's gorgeous. Those shots are probably legendary today. Like that's that's my biggest takeaway of this movie. I don't know why I didn't see it as much as I saw, for example, like the King Kong Empire State Building thing. I would think this is way more beautiful because it's not stop motion. It's actually a guy in a suit swimming around. Mm-hmm. But just the way he even acts curiosity and he's like the way he moves is also very non-human like i guess the way he swims he's trying to do his best to not come off as a guy in a suit but there are actually two suits one for underwater and one for out of the water and it was played by two different men rico brody was the swimmer he was a professional diver and he was required to hold his breath up to four minutes Damn, I mean, him and Tom Cruise way in the chink. <laughs> Tom is probably like, I could do eight. <laughs> he did. He did seven for the movie, if I can remember correctly. Oh, I, I, okay, that's where that joke came from. <laughs> Puta madre, f- not a crack, but f- me. Browning was my MVP for me because of the movements in his underwater were fantastic, and I just was mesmerized. And it helps that it's in black and white, and how murky the water is. It helps sells every effect beautifully. It helps with like the aesthetics of it. And the actor who was on land was Ben Chapman, and he would do everything outside of the water. Chapman had to wear the suit for 14-hour days. Oh my god, that's terrible. Which would make the suit extremely hot. Even worse, the eyepieces were made it super hard for him to see. So in the scene where he's carrying the actress into the cave, she actually clocked her head on one of the fake rocks, and there's a famous picture of a nurse tending to her. Oh, okay. When when she was carrying her inside, you could see like he was, he did not know what he was doing. Well, I think it's also like that creature wouldn't know how to hold a human woman, you know? So she's kind of flopped over. It makes it more believable. Yeah. But I would imagine like the person holding her is like, oh, shit, I'm going to kill this woman if I hit her in the face with something because I can't see. Well, he did. <laughs> 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 don't mess with her beautiful face <laughs> no way there's also obviously conflict between the crew and it's just the old school stuff i guess back then it was the new school stuff of this guy hating this guy for whatever reason but they eventually have to take dive and i just was laughing at the size of the picture of the camera that they had to go underwater oh, with oh yeah that was enormous that's a big ass camera dog <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was asking myself how how did they get the the shots uh, shots underwater? Then I saw that camera and I was like, oh, that's how. And then it turns out that's just a picture camera, not a not a movie camera. Yeah, the camera works underwater though. <laughs> you can say oh. more about my shitty phone. <laughs> <laughs> 
they eventually caught the creature and i th- the shot of him from outside the water inside the cage and he's just looking up is creepy as all hell too that when when the guy was looking at it with a gun i would have shot it just shot it because i would hate that thing looking at me he wants the other guy that's the whole conflict the one guy wants to kill it the other guy wants to study it you leave it alone first of all you leave it alone it's attacking you book it well then the creature gets light on fire <laughs> <laughs> literally and he jumps in the water before he turns into fish sticks do you like fish sticks <laughs> Sure. <laughs> I did like the underwater scraps. Those were really cool between the creature and the asshole. <laughs> <laughs> and when the asshole loses, mm. yeah, now you should leave. It's really effective because there's a lot of crap down there underwater. So a lot of things get kicked up. And it's just like, I've never seen a cool underwater fight until then. Right. And it happened in 1954, which is wild. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, completely. And even the when he spraying the gunk at the at the gill man, mm-hmm. you're losing visibility on purpose. Right, everything is calculated and it works. And I just love also how there's a back and forth of strategizing. It's like, oh, you kill my guy, well we're gonna get you. Oh, you shoot me, well I'm gonna get your other guy. Oh, you're gonna get my other guy, well we're gonna do this. Well, I'm gonna block your boat. You're gonna block my boat. Well, it's just back and forth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just keep going back and forth until they end up with him. Thing that like really <laughs> made me laugh was when they were mixing the thing to put on the tank so they could spray it in the gill man's face yeah when <laughs> the gill man in the back is just trying to kill the di- the, the dude that with the oh, fucked up face <laughs> that he sticks his hand through the thing <laughs> See, he's like, uh, uh. I was dying laughing. how do they how do they uh fix it you close the window you just close the window <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So actually, during the the 1950s, people were starting to get TVs at home. So movie sales started to go down a little bit. So to combat that, movies starting to release in 3D. It was black and white 3D. They were giving glasses in the theater and the whole shebang. How the hell did that work? (laughs) The same way that the color ones work, I guess. It's just... Retro tech. Yeah. Creature of the Black Lagoon actually released in 3D and became the most famous 3D movie of the 1950s. Ooh. But you'll be glad about this one, bruh. The idea actually came in in 1941, where Mexican cinematographer Gabriel Figueroa was actually chatting at a dinner party about the myth of a race of half-fish, half-human lost in the Amazons. So it was the Mexicans' idea! So it was us! (laughs) So producer William Allen was actually writing stories after hearing this tale, and got obsessed for it. So, you're welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mexican, for giving us this mo- the idea for this movie. Because this movie is just, is just a gem. Yeah, I'm glad I watched it. It was been on my list forever since I actually refined the list. And I was like, okay, let's go back and do some old school monster movies. We've actually done King Kong, too, which I'll leave for you right over there. Let us know what other monster movies or any other movies you guys would like us to do for the list. Thank you guys for watching. And remember to always and forever. You do. Bye. Uy, dejalos que es puto.